Hi, my name is Ko and I'm with the Institute of Electronics at Graz University of Technology. Today I want to talk about ground bouncing in terms of a CMOS output driver. As usual, let me explain some basics first. Here I have drawn our test chip for today. The chip has a very simple functionality and contains 8 CMOS inverters. Each of them represents a CMOS output driver. Let me now sketch a single CMOS inverter. So we have a PMOS here on the top and here an N was on the bottom. And that's it. Now, what happens during the switching activity of our output driver? On the top right, you can find a graph where the x-axis shows the input voltage and the y-axis the output voltage. An ideal switch will now look like this. But as we cannot achieve this behavior, the real curve will more look like this. When we now start to switch from high to low, first, the PMOS is in its linear region while the NMOS is high ohmic. Just as a reminder, you can evaluate the operation region of a MOSFET easily by those equations. So in this case, if we put some numbers, we have a 0 volt input and a 5 volt output. The NMOS is in its sub-threshold region whereas the PMOS sees a source to drain voltage of approximately 0 volt but the source to gate voltage of 5 volt. So it is in its linear region. After the threshold voltage of the NMOS the PMOS further stays in its linear region, but the NMOS goes into saturation. And there will be a small amount of time where both transistors are in saturation. So, during a switching event, a current will flow from VDT to ground, which looks like this curve here. And this current is now called the crowbar current. Ground bouncing now describes the phenomena when the ground of the IC differs from the ground of the PCB. This is mainly caused by the bond wires of the chip. As we can see here, VDD and ground contact are placed in the worst possible way because the loop error between those is big. This causes a high inductance at the ground pin but at the VDD pin as well. So we can draw in here an inductance. Now, when the crowbar current is flowing, there will be a voltage drop over this inductance according to L times DI over DT. So the IC ground isn't equal to the PCB ground anymore and that's not good. Besides the crowbar current, there is another value we need to consider, the dynamic switching current. We need to consider a load after our inverter stage. If it's another inverter stage, we can easily draw a capacitor here. So now what happens during the switching event? When the output changes from 0 to 1, charge carriers must flow to the capacitor. In the other way, when the output changes from 1 to 0, the capacitor must discharge and the charge carrier must now flow to ground. On its way, they will see the inductor as well and thus further increases the ground bounce voltage. So. This is our test PCB for today. We are using a 9 volt battery to power up our PCB 
and generating a 1 MHz signal with an oscillator as an input signal for all of our 8 output drivers. You can see here we are using a 4 channel scope and with channel 2, 3 and 4 we are observing the output voltage of our CMOS output driver 2, 3 and 4 and with channel 1, so the yellow line here, we are observing the ground bounce voltage. So ideally the ground bounce voltage, so the voltage on the ground potential should be ideally at 0 volt. And now let's have a look what happens if we power up our circuit and let's zoom in a little bit. You can now see here the output voltage of our second CMOS output driver in green, the output of our third output driver in blue and the output of our fourth output driver in pink. All CMOS inverters give us a 5 volt 1 MHz rectangular signal and ideally all signals should overlap. As we only have a 4 channel scope here, we are limited in seeing 3 out of 8 output signals. In yellow, you can see the ground bounce voltage. So this voltage isn't zero. Instead, we are measuring a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of about 2 volt. So that's really high. In addition, we can observe that the ground bounce voltage is higher here when switching from 1 to 0 than when switching from 0 to 1. So why is that? The reason for that is when we are switching from high to low, both crowbar current and dynamic switching current sum up as both are flowing into ground. When switching from low to high, however, the ground bounce voltage only consists out of the crowbar current. The question now is, how can we get rid of that nasty ground bounce voltage here? So there are a lot of possibilities and one method is called skewing. So here we can see at this overshot for example that all those ringing effects sum up to that evil ground bounce voltage here. The same here when the signal is going from high to low those ringing effects sum up to that ground bounce disturbance here. So the idea now is we have eight CMOS output drivers. Why don't we shift those timings in a way that those nasty effects do not sum up but cancel each other out? So let me demonstrate that effect for you. So now let's start by skewing the first CMOS output signal. Okay, maybe that was not the best idea because we are not observing on um, the first CMOS output driver. So let's continue with the second signal here. And now you can see I can shift the green signal here and as I'm shifting the green signal, also the disturbances on the ground level shifts. And I can shift those in a way that they sum up to a more evil disturbance here. Or I can shift those in a way that the disturbances can cancel each other out. So I will now play a little bit around with this, those settings here to find the optimum value now. Okay, of course we could further fine tune our result now, but I think you have the idea now that beforehand we had a peak to peak voltage of about 2 volts and now after skewing we have a peak to peak voltage of about 800 millivolts. Okay then, I hope you have liked the short clip about ground bouncing in a CMOS output driver and that you have learned something new. But anyways, thanks for watching.